certainly an underrated coach. Bo Ryan, to me, is the most underrated coach in America for what he's achieved. Devin Harris, we look at, is one of the most underrated point guards in America. He is a solid contributor offensively in many ways. Rebounds, assists, steals, points. He does it all. Some streaks on the line for Wisconsin. Overall, they've won 21 in a row here with the Cole Center. But under Bo Ryan, who's in his third year as head coach, they have never lost a conference game at home. 17-0 under Coach Ryan here in Madison. They've only lost, Dan, two games at home since he's been here in the tenure as a coach. Those two, the Skip Prosser and Wake Forest, who's certainly underrated Mr. Prosser. And then we talk about they lost to Lynn Greer, who was on fire yep. for Temple and John Cheney. Michigan State just 5-6 and six coming into this game. You saw the numbers for Devin Harris against Indiana Tuesday. A 34-point win for the Badgers over the Hoosiers. The most lopsided win for Wisconsin in that rivalry in 90 years. It's a confident bunch of Badgers. We'll see how the Spartans respond to conference play. And they're playing without one of the star players, kid named Tucker, who's out, a very good athlete. Alondo Tucker broke his foot in October, missed five games, came back and played very well for four, but has now missed his fourth game in a row again, and they don't know if or when they will get him back. So Andreas Helmick at 6'9", into the starting lineup. Mike Wilkinson, a very underrated player, had 20 and 10 against Indiana. He's had six double-doubles in his career. That was the first one this year. And they humiliated Indiana. The Hoosiers shot 29% in that game. Paul Davis inside. Good start for Michigan State, establishing Davis in the post. Well, they got to get him involved early because it affects the perimeter game as well if he gets going on the baseline. Wisconsin, meanwhile, Dick, a very patient team offensively. They run that swing offense, the interchangeable. Their players go perimeter and interior. Wilkinson has it stripped. Here's Shannon Brown off to the races. A great athlete playing with a lot of confidence. He's a kid with a great upside. He's a diaper dandy, outstanding high school player. Came out of Illinois, and I, I think he's got stardom all over him. A freshman had 15 points and 7 rebounds last week and a loss to Syracuse. They went 0 for 6 against all those tough competition. Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, Oklahoma, Syracuse, and lost on the road to UCLA. Now Michigan State forces a third turnover. Three trips, three turnovers by Wisconsin. They commit fewer turnovers than any team in America. And all of, already, Dick, they've committed three here in the first minute and a half. They only had five, to put that in perspective, only had five against Indiana. And already three here today. So Bo Ryan does not like what he sees early from his team. He's not used to seeing it. Well, look at that. Leads the uh, Big Ten in turnover margin. Do a great job protecting the basketball. His key for success is ball movement. Look at this right now. What a great start by Michigan State. If you are Tom Izzo, you cannot be happier because their tendency this year, Dick, has been to fall behind early, make a late run, but fall short. I think he was a very confident guy talking to him before the game. You had a chance uh, yourself, along with Doris Burke and I, talking to him, and he was a really confident yeah. guy. Well, even though they're 5-6, and six, they're 0-0 in league play. This is almost like a fresh start for Tom Izzo and the Spartans, starting really a four-guard lineup. Alan Anderson at 6'6". Six, six. They call him the power forward, but he does a lot of work at the point as well. They had a poor start last year, too, and it got going, got a real good run, and got into the NCAA tournament and really created a lot of damage once they got into the tournament. Michigan State playing a little more physical, a little more confident here earlier today. The ball will stay with the Spartans, and Tom Izzo is already fired up and into this game. He knows how important this conference opener is to his team. I tell you, it's a 12 noon game, Eastern time, 11 a.m. here, but he's all ready to go, man. He's been ready since like 6 in the morning. Hill kicks it to the open man. Anderson had a foot on the line. It's a two, and it's a nine to nothing lead for Michigan State. They had an entire week. They were off after the last game. The Syracuse had a week to prepare, so they got fresh legs, and they got to really come out here with a good attitude, knowing it's the start of the Big Ten season. Who Wade gets Wisconsin on the board. Who Wade did a great defensive job on Bracey Wright. He and Owens held the two for 15, and Wright is one of the great guards in America. Shannon Brown baseline in Michigan State. Dick still has not missed a shot. They're five for five. I tell you, their problem this year has been defensively. They're allowing teams to shoot 48.6% against them, and they're not rebounding like a normal Tommy Zell club. I don't know about you. When I saw that 48%, I thought that must have been a misprint. I did, too. Three will go down for Freddie Owens. He hit a big three last year to beat Tulsa at the end of the game to get him to the Sweet 16. And then the Badgers lost a tough game, a heartbreaker to Kentucky. 
11 to 5 Michigan State three minutes into the game Davis has it knocked away Michigan State gets it back Torberg from outside a long two Michigan State can't miss they're six for six well they're six for six they're 13 to five lead but they're only plus eight there's plenty of time in this basketball game all five starters have already scored in this game for the Spartans great start as you said you can't script it any better they lay off Helmick. He misses the 18-footer. Good rebound in traffic by Hill. Michigan State, again, playing small. Not quite as physical, not the rebounding force they have been in past years. They really suffered a big break when Warbeck decided to go and play over in Europe. Offensive foul right there by Michigan State. I think they do a great job, though, Wisconsin in their offensive sets with their back screens and the way they interchange players. Davis picks up the foul, his first. In the last 15 games in which Michigan State has played at Wisconsin, typical Big Ten basketball, neither team has even reached 70 points once in the last 15 meetings. They're, uh, especially Michigan State, obviously, off to a big offensive start here today. Paul Ryan is two zip against Tom Izzo. Prior to that, Wisconsin had lost eight in a row to Michigan State. Davis to the bench after the first foul. Jason Andreas, a fifth-year senior, into the game now for Michigan State. Wilkinson shoots over him, and it bounces over the backboard, over to the Spartans. Utilize the skip pass. You talk about Bo Ryan, you talk about a guy that's really labored in the trenches. Any guy that can win four Division three national championships, as he did at Wisconsin Platteville, can flat-out coach. He just had to work really, really hard to get an opportunity at a great school like Wisconsin. Originally from Chester, Pennsylvania, but he spent the last 27 right years here. Andrea is wide open from Hill, and Michigan State is now 7 for 7. Nice little two-man game right there, a breakdown in communication by Wisconsin. No communication on the defensive end. The Badgers have given up only 55 points per game this year. They've given up 15 in four and a half minutes. As Zach Morley in off the bench, junior college player. He turns it over. Maurice Ager in off the bench now for the Spartans, number 13, coming off a 14-point game against Syracuse. Shot it well there after having a big shooting slump for five games. He's an outstanding athlete, great transition player. He's got explosiveness. They're trying to get Hill free off the screen. And it's going to go against Wisconsin. I believe Boo Wade is called for the foul. If you are Tom Izzo, you could not dream of a better start to the game than the Spartans have had. Seven for seven from the field. Nice little screen and roll. There's the little layup. They're going to wake this crowd up. This crowd is asleep right now. They did it. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. Can I cut in? Sure. You look just like my third husband. You look like a 1010987 -10 user. Oh, I sure am. I tried 1010987. 10 it was just like you said. Three cents a minute and 39 cents to connect to anywhere in the U.S. And to Canada. And Western Europe. You call Europe much? I'm only nine. No commitment, no monthly fees. No sweat. I can't believe it's three cents a minute. Yeah, well, we're going to keep dancing until you believe Purple. Yeah. So am I. Uh, and I'm Air Miles. So am I. Bank One presents Personal Platinum. And I chose the low intro rate. Me too. And I'm middle of the month payment. No, I'm beginning of the month. You're purple. Yeah. Bank One's Personal Platinum. Choose the one for you. I like Pilates. Oh, I love drinking those. Individual answers. Bank One. How about this number? How about this number? Okay, with the sports package. Nice. Life's better with the butterfly. Come see how at msn.com. For generations, they have been the two biggest names in terror. Now, for the first time ever on DVD, two legends will come together. Winner kills all. Freddy vs. Jason on New Line Platinum Series DVD, Tuesday, January 13th. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball. Brought to you by 1010987. Give it a try. 
here in front of a sellout crowd in Madison, Wisconsin. A 10-point lead for Michigan State. What a start for them. Paul Davis, so many expectations, so much pressure is the only real big man for the Sparks this year. With more on him to the third member of our team today, Doris Burke. Well, Dan, of the six non-conference losses that Michigan State suffered in the midst of that brutal schedule, the normally stoic Paul Davis became visibly upset after the loss to Duke on December 3rd. It got back to Coach Izzo. Coach Izzo called him into his office the next day. They talked things out. He said, listen, I'm thrilled you became that upset because it means your level of care is there, the kind of care that's necessary to get us out of that. In the aftermath, they spent about mm, 12 hours over the course of those two days together reviewing film, talking things out. His level of play has received much benefit from that time. Tom Izzo said it helped me as a coach as well, guys. Look, I, I'll tell you, Doris, what a great job they did executing right there. You know, you talk about passion and caring. There's no one that really cares more than Tom Izzo. This guy has such a passion about coaching and about his players. Morley from outside misses the three. Look at the athleticism of Tolbert's time for the rebound. They are really determined. I'll tell you, if Wisconsin's going to win this game, they got to really find a way to focus and to start to execute. This is a much different looking Michigan State team, Dick, than you and I have seen the other three times we've seen him in person this year. They got a special bounce, but remember, we've seen him against great competition. Yep. We've seen him against Duke and Oklahoma and against Kansas. A 12-point lead for the Spartans, who still have not missed a shot in this game. Now the shot clock down to five. Ager for three. And finally a miss for Michigan State. And then we've got a foul over the back on the Spartans. I'll tell you one thing, they're showing a lot of unselfish play. Look at a little screen down, and there's the release. He releases inside, gets inside position, making the extra pass. Torbord gets the layup. Unselfish play. Today, six assists on eight field goals. That's 75%, eight for nine. That'll get it done against anybody. Andreas commits the foul his first. Again, Michigan State playing really with four guards. They're smaller, but it may be more athletic than this Wisconsin team here today. You know, what they've got to be concerned about in terms of the building here right now, the students are not on campus yet. Right in Madison, and that could be affecting the crowd as well. Certainly the lead by Michigan State has played a way, played a big role in quieting the crowd. Rashid Johnson in the game now for the Spartans. Left-hander Owens off the glass, no good, and three Spartans surround the rebound. Kevin Harris is going to have to find a way to really get them going. That's what a leader does. The future star player has to step up when your club is struggling. Neither Harris nor Wilkinson has scored yet in this game for the Badgers. Not defending like they normally defend. Not really pressuring the basketball, getting wide open looks. Chris Hill missed the wide open look. He's their best outside shooter. And the rebound to Ray Nixon, a sophomore out of Milwaukee, who's getting more playing time because of the injury to Willando Tucker. I have a tendency right now, they're a little stationary offensively. They gotta get a little more movement. Owens misses the three, another rebound for Torber. To be effective, Dan, offensively, you've got to have ball movement and player movement. And they had a ton of each against Indiana on Tuesday. They just picked apart that Hoosier defense and beat them 79-45. Well, that's the strength of a Bull Ryan basketball team. He's a guy that really gets into fundamentals, offensively and defensively, is an outstanding teacher. Davis is going to check back into the next opportunity for Michigan State. Johnson, nice feed inside, Torbert. And a good recovery by Wisconsin, but it is still Spartan ball. The college basketball season continues later today on ESPN. Memphis, led by Antonio Birch, taking on Southern Miss at 5 Eastern. The Tigers have won five straight as they headed to conference play. That is a dangerous Memphis team starting to get some play inside, and they've got a ton of talented guys on the perimeter. They're coming off a great win, had that win on a road against Villanova. Here's Davis, gets his man in the air, takes a bump. And it'll stay with the Spartan shot clock at one as Chris Hill throws it over the backboard. Players are going to need a little lift from the crowd, but to get that lift, they're going to have to make something happen. Beautiful campus out here in Madison, a great yeah. school. It's produced a lot of outstanding alums. Our own Andy Katz went here. Steve Bornstein, our former boss right. at ESPN ABC. Rudy Bornsky, <laughs> USA Today. I know one thing. If they let Rudy in his school, anybody can go to this school. I'm only teasing. Rudy and his beautiful wife went here, graduated. And we'll see the former Badger, Andy Katz, uh, at halftime of this game today. Good cut by Clayton Hansen. And the walk-on from Reedsburg, Wisconsin, gets his first bucket of the game. And that's part of the swing offense, getting some motion without the ball, cutting without the basketball. Hanson's a scrapper. That's got the crowd a little bit alive. They need a defensive stop. A foul before the shot going against Michigan State. 
I spelled away from the ball. I smell a little spurt coming on. A kid like a Hanson could give them a little lift. As you look at Bo Ryan, a lot of people don't know who that guy is. But think about it. Two years in this building, 17-0 in Big Ten action. And for two years, he's been coach of the year in the Big Ten. That's quite an achievement. Eight years an assistant here at Wisconsin in the late 70s and early 80s before going to Division III Platteville. As Jake mentioned, four national titles there. Two years at Wisconsin and Milwaukee, and now in his third year here at Wisconsin. You know, it's amazing as you travel across America like you and I do. The bottom line is when you mention the Big Ten, people immediately think of Michigan State, Illinois, Indiana. Very seldom do you hear the name Wisconsin, and all they've done is win two consecutive Big Ten titles and have a great opportunity for a three-peat. Rashid Johnson to foul his first. Anderson back in for Ager, but Rackus on the floor for the first time for the Spartans as well. Little matchup defensively by Michigan State, trying to match up, eliminate those cuts out of that swing offense. Still looking to get a Harris and or Wilkinson going for the Badgers. Both still scoreless, eight minutes in. Harris has got to step up. He's their star player. He's the guy that makes big plays for them. The coaches had him as the preseason player of the year in the Big Ten Conference. Here he is. They need that. That's what they need. A guy like that can give you that lift quickly. He is a big-time player who a lot of people don't know about. Remember the name, Devin Harris. All of a sudden, as well as Michigan State has played, the lead is down to seven. Turnaround by Davis. No, rebound Badgers. I told you I feel a spurt, Mr. Schulman. It's going to start with this guy right here. Top pull up three. Rattles out for Harris. That would have brought them to their feet. Wilkinson keeps it alive for Hanson. Great hustle by Wilkinson. Hanson's been a spark, and here comes the Badger faithful. They're getting a little bit alive. The Grateful Red. I remember one of the Bleacher Creatures. Bag within five. Look at the D by Harris on Rasheed Johnson. Anderson trying to shake Nixon. Line drive jumper, no. Rebound, Wisconsin. And a start again. Mr. Harris showed his multi-talents with the rebound. He started to get a little more active. He was standing around early in the game, Harris. Wilkinson with a travel, trying to drive by Davis. Bo Ryan cannot believe it. More on Bo and where Bo Ryan comes from. His history when we come back to Madison after this. What? You're no longer the wingmaster. KFC Honey Barbecue Wings, sauciest around. Seven for $2.99, 20 for $7.99. To get the taste on your face, go KFC. Sensitive teeth, what do you do to avoid pain? I de ice my ice cubes. I microwave ice cream. Stop the pain. Just change your toothpaste to dentist recommended Sensodyne to build a barrier against pain. It's easy. Stop the pain. Change to Sensodyne. Sometimes when people come into H&R Block, it's like looking in a mirror. I remember the pressure. Student loans, overdue bills. With Instant Money, they can walk in with their taxes and walk out with a loan check. Instant Money Loans, another advantage of H&R Block. We moved to Earthlink because I only want the Internet that's good for them. Because they're not ready for the same Internet. Because it's safe for him, and I get an internet without training wheels. Different families, different passions, different reasons for moving to Earthlink, like new parental control software, customized features for each child, and filter out websites, emails, even keywords. Call 1 800 Earthlink and get six months of dial up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. Move to Earthlink, it revolves around you. To make it more convenient for people to enjoy the refreshing taste of 7 Up, I make vending machines that find you. I also fixed it so the product gets to the consumer faster. Hey, cool. Ah! Ah! They're like bloodhounds. This is going great. Ah! Ah! Oh. 96, that's pretty fast. Aren't you tired of frozen dinner? Make it Campbell's instead. Nice. Chunky chicken corn chowder. Now have more chicken. And who taught you how to pick a melon? Well, Bo Ryan may have been in the state of Wisconsin in various capacities for 27 years, but he comes from the East Coast, Chester, Pennsylvania, the same hometown, the same high school, in fact, as Jameer Nelson, the outstanding player at St. Joseph's, one of the best players 
in the country. John Linehan, also the former star of Providence College, also from Chester, Pennsylvania. Let's go to Doris Burke with more on Bo. Bo is actually a three-sport star in high school football and baseball. His other two, his father, Butch Ryan, started a youth league, 1,300 boys and girls now in a variety of sports. But in 1969, guys, when he graduated from Wilkes University in Pennsylvania, he had a job with Atlantic Richfield. Atlantic Richfield, he had a marketing job, but it was at the time in our country, the last time, as a matter of fact, where they were still drafting in Vietnam, worked two years in a stockade in the Army, came out of that and said, listen, i got to get back to coaching. And Dick Vitale, his father Butch said, he's the only guy that can out-talk you. I tell you, Butch is quite a guy. Every time I would see him at the Final Four, he would have Bo Ryan stories. Butch and his beautiful wife, Louise, are right up in Naples right now, cheering for his son. Everybody in the coaching fraternity knows Butch Ryan more than they know Bo. That was in an article by Jill Lieber, who did a great story from USA Today about Bo. What a drive by Boo Wade, and he's fouled. Coach Ryan also, even though he's now been here for 27 years, he's rooting for the Eagles tomorrow I know. when they play the Packers. So wow. get a load of that. He better not say that too loud, Mr. <laughs> Ryan. He better not say that too loud in this state. Hey, uh, maybe trouble here for Michigan State, Dick. Paul Davis just picked up his second foul. He's the only big man that Tom Izzo gives a lot of minutes to. They got to bring the ball inside to try and get number three on him. That certainly would give him a strategic edge because, as you said, he's their dominator inside. There's a bit different bounce now to the Wisconsin kids after Harris made that three. Yep. They seem to have a little bit more of a spark. Hanson off the bench has certainly been a plus as well. And the missed free throw turns into another opportunity for Wisconsin. They're on an 8-0 run right now. Harris for three. And another Wisconsin offensive rebound. Michigan State standing around being out hustled right there. Just standing around. And Bowser. Tom Izzo's getting somebody off the bench to help change that. They used that high post screen at Ray Gio. Good step out by Davis. Nixon gets it open. Nixon really giving him a spark off the bench now. Getting some minutes with Tucker out. The Badgers are back, baby. The Badgers are back. Wisconsin, and you can see how cold Michigan State's been since that perfect start to the game. And they have really picked it up defensively, starting to play the passing lanes, beating cutters for the spot. A lot more active. Baseline drive by Hill. Not there. Another rebound for Harris. I love Harris. I love the fact that he's so versatile. Only 175 pounds, and he's up about 15 pounds from his freshman season two years ago. You know, Dan, he's an outstanding rebounder as well as a guy defensively creates steal opportunities. Not only are the Badgers back, the Grateful Red, the entire crowd is back into this one now. I used to call it the Bleacher Creatures in the old building. I will never forget in 1987, I was interviewed by Joe Hart, their columnist out here who does a solid job, and we were talking about in 87, Indiana came in number two in the nation. They were 1-11 with Steve Yoda, and it went to triple overtime, one of the great games that I ever was part of in my 25-year history at ESPN, which started with Wisconsin. Wisconsin That's right. And the ball. And what really shocked me, Bo Ryan was on the bench for that game, he told me. The first ever nationally televised college basketball game was 25 years ago, Wisconsin against DePaul, that you did with Joe Boyle. Right, right. with Joe Boyle, and Bo Ryan was on the sideline as an assistant That's coach right. to Bill Cofield. They had Wes Matthews was their star. The ball had Mark McGuire and company, and I was teasing both. Wes Matthews' son, by the way, is a great player here in Madison right now as a junior. Came to see me last night at my book signing, but you didn't come to see me. <laughs> Who's he go what college is he going to? Did you ask him where he's going to play? Tough game. Now a 12-0 run. I think it's been tough to get him out of Madison. Marquette will be in a hunt as well. Think about basketball in the state. University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee last year, NCAAs lose the heartbreaker to the Fighting Irish. Marquette and Top Green go to the final four, does a phenomenal job. Go right here to the Sweet 16. Basketball's alive in the state of Wisconsin. It's just not Green Bay Pack of football. The first lead of the game for the Badgers on a 13 to nothing run. Remember I told you I saw a little you spark when it went down, yeah, too. You snipped it out about five minutes ago. A you foul before feel, the shot. You know, you've been around the game a lot, Dan. You can look certain times, and body language tells you so much about a team. 
and you looked at the Wisconsin kids, they were stationary, and Michigan State was alive, and then all of a sudden, they got a spark when Harris made that trifecta. Ray Nixon, the foul, his first. Clayton Hansen's given them a boost off the bench. We mentioned he's a walk-on. Bo Ryan offered him a scholarship at Wisconsin-Milwaukee, but then when Coach Ryan left for Madison, Hansen decided to come to Madison, even though he wouldn't be a scholarship player here. Oh, boy, Devin Harris must have come down too hard with that arm because he gets called for the foul, his first. Good offensive drive, really explodes into the basket, getting that extra step. Harris from the back makes the contact. That's Bo Ryan from Chester, PA, as you said earlier, and Dara said, Jameer Nelson, to me, pound for pound, inch for inch from St. Joseph's, is the best player in the nation. And I think they have the best tandem in America as a backcourt with he and Delante West, the deepest backcourt and the most talented as that Blue Devil country with Duke when you talk Ewing and Duhan. And certainly, you put Luau Dang back there, as well as Dockery. 13-0 run now over after the free throw by Ager. St. Joseph's one of the few remaining Division I right. unbeatens. If Mississippi State can take care of business today against Arkansas, they'll be unbeaten when we go down to Starkville Tuesday night for a game against Kentucky. Yeah, I can't wait to go down to Starkville. We haven't been there a long time. Talked to Coach Stansbury this week. They're all pumped up. What a transfer they got is Mr. Roberts. Wide open look for Zach Morley. Offensive rebound on the missed three. Morley's been a big plus off the bench. Nice look inside. Andreas Helmick from Boo Wade. Boo Wade made an excellent pass to the interior. Helmick with the catch and the score. So Wisconsin once down 12, has the lead again. And the rebound by Wade on the miss by Ager. And the reason they have the lead, not so much the execution offense, they're doing a better job on a defensive end. The Shoot it. State's now missed eight in a row. Wade, maybe a little bit too much room, a little yeah. too much time. Try to be too unselfish. That's one of the trademarks of Wisconsin. They wanted to walk for three. They wanted to walk. They had a legitimate call. I thought he shuffled his yeah. feet. I thought he did a little John Travolta <laughs> dance right there. Just the second three-pointer of the season for Allen Anderson. I saw you dance, Ben. You know John Travolta. I know, no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you got some good moves. Inside. The swing offense, a big guy passing it into the post to a guard. Well, the interchange, they really do well. The greatest I ever saw interchanging guards to the baseline was Louisville in their era under Denny Crump. We are tied at 22 in front of a sellout crowd here in Madison, Wisconsin. The conference opener for the Spartans, the second lead game for Wisconsin, they're 1 0. And psychologically, this would be a big W for Michigan State sitting at five and six and a disappointing start. Anderson can't hit from 15. Always looking for trailers. Hanson feeling it. He can shoot the basketball. He has been a spark for off the bench. Here's the guy, comes in, gets some minutes, and making the most out of the minutes. Getting some PT, and that'll earn him more PT, more playing time. Averaging three a game, he's got nine already today. Hill with a tough step back jumper. And Wisconsin dominating the defensive line. And that's how you win league championships. You have to have people step in off the bench and contribute, especially when a club is struggling. I mean, that's quite an achievement. Your first two years as a coach of this league, and you win two Big Ten titles. Yep. That's a nice drive. And a foul. And two Coach of the Year honors as well. You know, last night on my book signing, had a lot of people came out, and one was Rick Olson, who played here and was an outstanding scorer in the 80s. And he presented me a sweatshirt. And on the back of the sweatshirt, he said, Dickie V, take a look at his sweatshirt. It said, Badgers, repeat, baby. <laughs> yeah, they're as good as anybody in the Big Ten right now. Torbert commits the foul, his first. Right now, is there a team that you think has separated itself from the pack in the Big Ten? I think we're looking at it right here. Until somebody proves to me that they come, come to Madison and beat them on this floor, they certainly have the edge. I mean, 17-0 in two years, they have not lost on this floor. That's an amazing achievement. And again, Alondo Tucker not playing because of a foot injury. They don't know if or when they're going to get him back. 
that's what I love about what he's done. He's lost the star player, and yet there's no making excuses. The same with Stanford, who has a tough test today at Arizona, with Josh Childress, who tipped it in to beat Arizona State the other night. It's a 22 to 5 run for the Badgers. Freddie Owens getting involved on the inside. Dick, Michigan State cannot slow Wisconsin down right now. Excuse me, how do you feel about your stockbroker? The truth? I do all the research, he makes all the money. Please, with all the ideas I come up with, he should be paying me. Oh, we feel great. We switched to T.D. Waterhouse and we never look back. Why pay all that money to Merrill or Schwab? T.D. Waterhouse has free independent research that makes it easy to come up with your own ideas and validate them yourself. I've never seen research like this online. So switch to T.D. Waterhouse, the alternative to higher priced brokers like Merrill and Schwab. ESPN Deportes has the sports you want, only in Spanish. More of the sports you love. More of the athletes you know. Championship events. Original programs. Special profiles. The last lap. The final minute. Extra time. ESPN Deportes. Call your cable or satellite provider to get ESPN Deportes now. Escape winter in the soothing warm waters of a whirlpool tub from Menards. Like these quality models by Aqualux. The Stephanie features nine powerful jets. On sale, $449. This elegant Catherine Corner Whirlpool is $798. Finish your bath project with Pace Cabinets. This beautiful five-piece Southampton Oak Ensemble includes a vanity top and faucet. On sale, $679. Menards is your one-stop plumbing and bath store. Save big money at Menards. Welcome back to our draft day cover. Oh, Joey grew up on football. Oh, Miami Pickett. Miami needs an old tackle. Hey, Joey, you're going to play for Miami. Miami. When you want a new car, nothing beats vehicles.com. It's the easy way to research nearly any kind of vehicle. They picked the receipt. It's okay, it's okay. Who's next? Minnesota. You're going to play for Minnesota, Joey. Minnesota? So you can find the car that's right for you, or for where you live. vehicles.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. Dave Ransom in our Sports Center in game studios, unbeaten Wake hosting Clemson. Chris Paul, the outstanding freshman. Sweet crossover move there, and the layup. Wake Forest looking good early. Then it's Paul, the nation's leader in steals. Coming up with one there, although that was kind of a gimme. And 10 of Wake's first 16 points, but they're up just one. And Dick. All right, Dave, thank you very much. This has been a game of streaks. You can see how Michigan State started, hit their first eight shots. Midway through a Wisconsin run, Paul Davis went to the bench with a second foul. Since he left, it's 15-5 Wisconsin. It's 22-5 overall. And, and it goes to reinforce a point that Tom Izzo made to us this morning again. Erasa Malorbeck, who would have been a sophomore this year, and in Coach Izzo's opinion, maybe an all-league caliber player, decided to play professionally in Europe. They just don't have enough depth in the front court. Well, you know, Lorbeck did so well at the end of the year in a postseason. Nice, nice pass. pass. Way to get it out after a steal. Fill the lane. Get in transition. You know what I love about this basketball team? When you look at Wisconsin, they're so unselfish. They look for one another, always make the extra pass. And that's teaching, and that is coaching. Yeah, they're obviously buying into everything that, that Coach Bill Ryan is selling them. You let, can me, tell. let me tell you something. He is so underrated, it's amazing. This guy can flat out coach. Hill for three. Got it. Big shot for the Spartans. They needed that out of Hill. He's a tr tremendous long-range shooter, one of the better long-range shooters they've had in the Tom Izzo era. 44% in his career. He's got two threes here today. And Michigan State quiets the crowd and gets back within four. Well, who can ever forget 2000? Wisconsin went to the final four with Dick Bennett at the helm. Nice move inside. Great post move down in that low block. Zach Morley. Love to do on him, huh? You and I would yeah. kill for that here. Well, shaggy as it is. You know, Morley's been a great plus coming out of junior college. But in 2000, that was the year that Michigan State won that yeah. national title. Beat Wisconsin in the Final Four. Beat him four times that season. What a play. Finish. What a play. What a athletic ability. That's what we talk about hang time. That's what we talk about the wrist of Horp and shorts. Devin Harris up there as a Skywalker. College basketball, my friends. They had a poll in USA Today, and it said 5 to 1 was the ratio. College to the NBA for popularity. And one of the reasons is right here, the spirit, the enthusiasm. What a great catch 
There's the little flip up. There's Mr. Harris with the catch. But don't forget this. The NBA has the greatest athletes in the world. Nice catch. Ability to hang. There's nobody that has the mobility, agility, and the stardom of the athletic talents of NBA players. Jake, to back up the point you were making about Coach Ryan and how underrated he is, you put together a list of, in your opinion, the most underrated coaches in the country. Well, take a look at these guys. They don't get a lot of national publicity and all they win. Skip Prosser keeps winning down at Wake Forest. Phil Martelli does an amazing job. Kevin Stallings is undefeated. He's got a tough one today. He's on the road at Kentucky. And Dana Altman, he just keeps churning out winner after winner up in great thank you a little respect man look at this here we remember too <laughs> <laughs> look at you you're in there too i am well wisconsin has beaten michigan state twice in a row they snapped the spartans 53 game home winning streak a couple of years ago then they beat them by 11 here last year torbert surrounded by big guys drew namick on the floor for Michigan State. Remember, Andreas has two, Davis has two, and the Spartans turn it over. Good defensive job stepping in front of the cutter, going down the lane, trying to get that little two-man game. Good anticipation. That's scouting. That's looking at film, evaluating. Let those back screens, they utilize those back screens so well in a swing offense. Wade strong in the post. And there's an example interchanging, bringing the perimeter player Owens, I mean Wade, down into the interior in a low block. They do that well. They invert those guards and forwards. We've had a 22-point turnaround in this game. Michigan State at one point was up by 12. They're actually playing now like they did against Indiana. Oh, Torbert with a fancy move on the inside. As a kid that came out of high school so highly rated, he was USA Today's National Player of the yeah. Year. That's been a lot to, to try to handle. He's done a great job defensively in his career. This year, not played as well defensively like he did last year. A rare mistake in the half-court set for Wisconsin. But that's about all that's gone wrong for them the last 10 minutes or so. They're up by eight. We're used to half-court. Now in transition, Devin Harris. More on the Badger floor leader when we come back. DJ Singh scintillating second round of seven straight birdies on the back nine. Wow. Catapulted him into the lead at the Mercedes Championship. DJ Singh rolls it right in. But the world's best are still within striking distance. Live third round coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. You glad I drove my new Pacifica? It can fit six, you know? The all-wheel drive's awesome in the snow, and it's got a five-star crash test rating. Unlike some people we know. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, too bad he doesn't have the capability of Pacifica. <laughs> Go well beyond the SUV with the Chrysler Pacifica. Plus, get this groundbreaking offer. Announcing Zero Plus. Right now, get 0% financing plus a $2,000 cash allowance plus our 770 powertrain limited warranty. For the best values in America, see your Chrysler dealer today. Stop. It's okay. It's going to be fine. No? AOL 9.0 Optimized with top speed technology makes web pages load up to five times faster than before. Mm. Mommy's home. Such a good boy. Life needs quick thinking. In life, some things just shouldn't change. Your fingerprints, your retina, your very DNA. So why change your wireless phone number just because you change services? Now you don't have to. Come to Radio Shack today and choose from our big selection of Sanyo, Samsung, and Nokia wireless phones. And to keep your number when you change your service provider, just show us your current bill and our helpful associates will take care of the rest. 7,000 neighborhood stores and 30,000 helpful associates. Radio Shack. I'm Dave for Epson. Here's what's coming up at the half. We'll see whether Wake Forest can remain unbeaten, taking on Clemson. Penn State trying to remain unbeaten, too. At least in Big Ten play, trying to go to 2-0. And, oh. and Andy Katz joins me as well to tell us why Roy Williams is unhappy with his team at North Carolina. Andy has that and much more coming up at the half, guys. 
All right, Dave, looking forward to that. You know, the, the Dick Vitale severed head thing. Never, <laughs> I, I never get used to that, but eight-point lead for Wisconsin. You're everywhere in this building. Devin Harris has been everywhere in this game here today. And for more on him, back to Dorisburg. But Dan, just to give you an indication how far he's come as a basketball player, as a freshman, he had to play the two-guard spot. There were questions around the Big Ten as a sophomore when he had to make the transition to the one. He played at such a high level last year that this year he was voted preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. He calls Bo Ryan a father figure. He says it's gotten to the point where he doesn't have to say a word. He says he's got a happy look and a sad look, and I know the difference at this point, guys. And Doris, he really has told us today when you took to Bo Ryan what a great job Devin Harris has done in learning how to be a quarterback, how learning how to be the leader, learning how to be a Brett Favre. He used a football analogy, yeah. taking charge in that huddle when we have a timeout. Shannon Brown off the side of the backboard, runs it down, but the shot clock expires. Uh, later this afternoon, some of the nation's top college football players meet in the 79th annual East-West Sh Shrine Game. The East team includes quarterback Casey Clawson from Tennessee. The West team includes quarterback Bradley Van Pelt from Colorado State. Two Eastern today, two and a half to go here in the first half in Madison. see them take a bad shot shot selection is so important when you look at all the great teams and the great leaders and coaches and you talk Roy Williams you talk the likes of Krzyzewski and all the great coaches out there bottom line is Gary Williams and company their teams take good shots yep. they understand what a good shot is and this Wisconsin team also they don't foul they get to the line they don't turn it over plain and simple they just don't beat themselves exactly that's a lot really uh, Mike Montgomery who does a great job at Stanford Harris fouled on a determined drive to the basket. Shannon Brown with a foul. Devin Harris averages better than two steals per game, and he just picked Brown's pocket. He's got the long, long arms, that long, long reach. Just understands how to play, plays winning basketball. He's got a winner's mentality. As we showed you before the game, not just to score, also assists, rebounds, steals, all a part of his game. And again, Michigan State's fortunes started going south and continued going south after Paul Davis picked up his second foul. He has not played in the last eight and a half minutes. You know, you made a great point when you said the bottom line is they don't foul and how big that is. Do you realize this? They led the nation last year, only allowing the fewest fouls, 14.9 a game. And really, when you do that, my God, you got a great chance to win. You're not putting people with the freebies. This year, they're giving up 15.1, which is ninth to the nation, but that's still a small Ager. number. Ager hangs and hits. Wisconsin has made 100 more free throws than their opponents have 12 games into the season. See, that's the key. Play defense and play it in a rhythm and as a team. And that's been a trademark of Tom Izzo. Coming into this year, that's the area that Tom is really concerned about that they have not defended like a typical Michigan state basketball team and make no bones about it mr Rizzo is one of the premier coaches in america more college basketball action coming up later today five eastern here on espn antonio birds and memphis taking on southern miss conference usa action on espn for more log on to espn.com you know we had that controversial game the other night with texas and that right. game was unbelievable providence and one of the reasons i really believe as we talk about different conferences i think the acc technology wise is way ahead of everyone else they're doing it also in the sec and the big 12 is going to do it as well in the future but they have what they utilize in the nba to red light all around the rectangular backboard so that an official has a great opportunity at the end of the game to determine whether a shot is good or bad you know what that only costs about thirty five hundred dollars why should every conference should have that every school that plays in the major conferences well tim higgins who was one of the officials on that providence game said it took them eight looks at a replay in about 10 minutes to find a look where they could tell for sure that the light where they could see the light on one of the replays yeah, wasn't blocked out yeah. by the basketball technology acc gets the edge of the fred barricade john swafford offensive foul on alan anderson and michigan state before the game today our crew here in madison shot the backboard the light and the clock to see if things were in sync with one another and as you can see not quite but the light is what matters the first thing they do is try to listen to a replay or judge the by the horn but if they can't do that because that's done at full speed then the light becomes important the zeros are, are not really a factor in this i'll tell you something else they do with the acc costs about eight thousand dollars to do 
as you got some action here. They use process timing, which means on a whistle by the official, the clock automatically stops and eliminates, alleviates lapsed time. So again, an A-plus to the ACC with an edge utilizing technology. <laughs> technology big now in college hoops. I mean, that could have been, see right here, right here, the whole backboard in the NBA and in the ACC lights up red, yep. lights up red in their league. So now a referee knows what is happening. Zach Morley at the line for the Badgers. Big trouble for Michigan State. Davis out with two fouls. Andreas out with three fouls. Now Justin Aukerman, a 6'9 freshman who has lost 20 pounds, has been suffering from the flu, is into the game. Delco Rowley, a redshirt freshman who Coach Izzo thought might be a starter by now, injured his knee. He's out for a few weeks. They are thin, thin, thin on the front line. Yeah, baseline has been a problem all year long. They have a lot of players that are interchangeable in terms of athletes, but they really, this is really tell you, a club that's struggling, that 0-6 against those quality opponents has really mentally put them in a little depressed state. Hill trying to shake Owens, gets the bounce. Nice drive by Hill. Hill, a quality young guy, comes from a great family. Coming up at the Bank One Halftime Report with Dave Revson, a look at ACC action between Clemson and Wake, Andy Katz with the latest news and notes, and also action in the Big East and Big Ten this afternoon. Happy birthday to Skeeter Francis, one of the great PR guys of all time, 82 years of age. They give a surprise party today down at Wake Forest. That is all here in the first half. Wisconsin once down 12, now up 10, trying to extend a couple of impressive streaks. 21 home wins in a row, 17 in a row in conference at home. The most they've ever won in a row at home was 24, and you weren't here at that time. That was in 1931. Let's go to Doris Burke with Bo Ryan. Coach, your team was down by as many as 12 early. You turned this thing around. What changed for you? Well, their, their shots stopped going in. They... They shot the ball as well as any team I've ever coached against or played against. That's how far back that goes. But I, And then we started hitting some shots. We got some looks where we're comfortable, and they took us out of that early. Now it's it's been two halves, theirs and ours, and now it's halftime and it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Paul Davis was on the floor for them when they made that run. How does he change things in the second half? Well, he can score, he can uh, post, he can defend. I mean, he can score inside and outside, and that's what makes him such a tough threat for them. Thanks, Coach. Good luck thank in the you. second half. Dan? All right, Doris, thank you. A 36-14 to 14 run for the Badgers to close the first half. Dave Revson standing by with the Bank One Halftime Report. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. So great turnaround there for the Badgers and looking impressive as they lead Michigan State at the half. Dave Revson with you. Welcome to the Bank One Halftime Report. We'll have some other highlights for you coming up at the half. Andy Katz also going to join us. Let us know why Roy Williams is unhappy with his team at North Carolina. That's coming up in just a moment. And more ACC action as well. The Demon Deacons looking to remain unbeaten. We'll have highlights of their game against Clemson. And here from Andy. That's next. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. At Papa John's, we couldn't think of a better way to celebrate our 20th anniversary than by giving you a Papa John's pizza for free. For 20 days only, order any large Papa John's specialty pizza at regular menu price, like our new Hawaiian barbecue or the works, and get a large one-topping pizza free. Buy one, get one free. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Love this time. Country is really nice, isn't it? Remember your first minivan? You loved that thing. Mm -hmm. Chrysler had just introduced them. So did I tell you we're getting one? Oh. What, with two kids and all? Two? Oh. Really? Yes. Expecting more? Check out Town & Country, America's best-selling luxury minivan ever. Plus, get a groundbreaking offer. Announcing Zero Plus. Now get 0% financing, plus a $2,000 cash allowance, plus our 770 powertrain limited warranty. For the best values in America, see your Chrysler dealer today. He's calculated the odds. Oh, whoa, whoa. What? You don't eat mixed nuts at a bar. Only one out of every six people wash their hands when they go to the bathroom. He's analyzed the risks. Space jumping! It's one of the most dangerous activities a human being can do. Have you done it? This Friday, the most cautious man on Earth will experience something Ballin'. he's never felt before. Ow. Along came
and Polly. Rated PG-13. This month, stay in to win with Mega Movies on in-demand pay-per-view. from Ashley. Go to indemand.com for details. If one of your New Year's resolutions is to get organized, then get to Menards for big savings on Rubbermaid stackable shelving units. Choose from a great selection all on sale. Get dozens of jobs done around the house with Dremel rotary tools. Choose from this kit with storage organizer and 70 accessories or this high-speed rotary saw, just $49.99 each. Power up with big savings from Menards. Welcome to the Bank One Halftime Report. Michigan State led by 12 early on in Madison. It's been all Badgers since then. 41-31 Wisconsin at the half. Dave Revson with you. Andy Katz joins me momentarily. Wake Forest, one of seven unbeatens remaining in the nation coming into today. Hosting Clemson, a team they've beaten 13 straight times at home. It's an old A-10 coaching rivalry. Skip Prosser going against Oliver Purnell. Let's check out the action in this one as we head to Winston-Salem. First half, 8-4. to four. Wake, Trent Strickland off the turnover. Look out. Throwing it down, and it's 10 4 in favor of the Demon Deacons. Still in the first 10 6 ball game. Eric Williams, the guy can play 12 6 in favor of Wake. Then it's Chris Paul, the outstanding freshman. We'll call that a steal. He leads the nation in that category. It was really just a disastrous inbounds play, and he lays it in right there. Wake up big at that point. Clemson made a run at them, though. Got within one, but now Wake up by eight. Jamal Levy hits down low and draws the foul. And it is all Wake Forest right now, 34 to 21 in favor of the Demon Deacons. You see Paul is leading the way with 10 Williams, actually with a dozen right now for Wake. Penn State off the surprising win over Minnesota, taking on Ohio State. Ben Luber hits the three. We have a 4-4 game early on. It's 8-7 Ohio State. Tony Stockman, the transfer on the break. Going to take it himself, but he lays it in. It's 10 7 in favor of the Buckeyes. Now up 14 11. Brandon Foos cheated. Nice pass right there. And they get the lay in. Ohio State up 16 to 11 at that point. Right now it is 16 to 15. Penn State trying to start 2 0 in the Big Ten for just the second time ever. And speaking of the Big Ten, more games today, including Northwestern and Iowa at 2 30. Purdue and Illinois is obviously the marquee matchup as that one pits Bruce Weber against his former boss, Gene Cady, the head coach of Purdue. And as we bring in Andy Katz right now, Illinois, Purdue, obviously an intriguing matchup right there. Leolana has some interesting off-the-court news this week. Yeah, there's some great news for Illinois because Darren Williams finally got the wires out of his broken jaw. He missed three games with the broken jaw, played the last two, but he could not eat solid foods for over three weeks. And Weber told me he lost almost 23 pounds. Now, Luther Head will not play today against Purdue, did not play against Ohio State, more than likely will play against Northwestern. He missed two games because he was driving with a suspended license. I had had some suspension problems earlier in the year as well. Now, I've been hyping this up. This better be good. Roy Williams, why is he mad with his team? Well, he was mad at his team. He's, he's getting better with his team, but he was mad at his team mainly because of them not listening to him in the huddle. And one of the perfect examples that he told me about was in this Wake Forest game when they lost in triple overtime. There was this huddle here at the end of the first overtime. Wake Forest needs a three-pointer to win the game. He told in the huddle, he said, Raymond Felton, you've got to stay with Chris Paul. Instead, Melvin Scott jumps out and fouls Chris Paul. He implored him, do not foul on that play. Chris Paul goes and hits two or three shots. They sent it to a second overtime. Wake Forest ultimately won in three overtimes. He said, if they listen to me in the huddles, then we will win more games. And he's not afraid to sit guys at the end of the Kentucky game. He sat Rashad McCants. Now, Roy's old team has some uh, injury problems of its own. What's going on with the Jayhawks? Yeah, we just learned this today. David Padgett, the starting freshman forward, is out with a stress fracture in his foot. He will miss Wednesday's game against Kansas State. They're going to reevaluate after that whether or not he'll play against Texas A&M. They still don't know. Jeff Graves, who was suspended for one game, will start in his place. And the good news for the Jayhawks, 
is they'll get junior guard Michael Lee back for Wednesday's game at Kansas State, or against Kansas State. He missed the first nine games with a shoulder injury. Now, Lee has started for them, a guy who played just a couple games. Cincinnati's still unbeaten, but also with injury problems, Andy. That's right. Armin Kirkland is not expected to play today against DePaul. He's got an MCL tear. Huggins, Bob Huggins told me he may play against Marquette on Wednesday night. Meanwhile, Robert Whaley will play today against DePaul. He won't start. They kept him home when they went to Tulane last week, mainly because he had a bad attitude. He was not practicing hard in practice, and Huggins told me, hey, if you don't practice hard, you're not playing. Blue Demons, some injury problems of their own. They're still without Andre Brown, their big double-double guy. That one Conference USA matchup today. We've got another one coming up 5 p.m. Eastern time as Memphis takes on Southern Miss. Coach Cal's team playing well, heading into that one's 5 Eastern. This halftime report is presented by Bank One's Personal Platinum, the credit card that's issued by us, but created by you. You're purple. Yeah. So am I. Uh, and I'm Air Miles. So am I. Bank One presents Personal Platinum. And I chose the low interest rate. Me too. And I'm middle of the month payment. No, I'm beginning of the month. You're purple. Yeah. Bank One's Personal Platinum. Choose the one for you. I like Pilates. Oh, I love drinking those. Individual answers. Bank One. Aren't you glad I drove my new Pacifica? It can fit six, you know? The all-wheel drive's awesome in the snow, and it's got a five-star crash test rating. Unlike some people we know. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, too bad he doesn't have the capability of the Pacifica. <laughs> Go well beyond the SUV with the Chrysler Pacifica. Plus, get this groundbreaking offer. Announcing zero plus. Right now, get zero percent financing, plus a $2,000 cash allowance, plus our 770 powertrain limited warranty. For the best values in America, see your Chrysler dealer today. Watch Winter X Games 8, live from Aspen, January 24th through 27th on ABC and ESPN. Presented by Right Guard. Jim Brewer here. I'm gonna show you how the new Right Guard Extreme Power Caps work. Power Caps are little balls of extra odor fighters. Let's say these guys represent odor. And the balls my friend Randy Johnson has here represent the Power Caps. <laughs> Destroy orders on contact. Get extreme, get right guard. You do not want to be older right now. Oh! <coughs> oh, this cold. I need a good night's sleep. This will make you feel better. Will I sleep better? Much better. You'll sleep like a baby. Yeah, they wake up every two hours. <coughs> like Sleeping Beauty. Jeez. <coughs> sleep like you did before we had kids. Hallelujah. Give me that. NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, best sleep you ever got with a cold medicine. I thought I'd show you how excited consumers get when they describe the refreshing taste of 7-Up. You, sir, clear! See, 7-Up is clear. You can almost feel the electricity in the air. Here you go, sir. Drink up. Welcome back to the Bank One Halftime Report. We are back. Some more highlights for you. Villanova and Notre Dame. Big East action. Pick up in the first half. Irish on top by one. Chris Thomas. Outstanding point guard. Little head fake. And hits the three. Irish up by four. Then it's the freshman, Colin Falls. This kid can shoot. And he shows it right there. Hits the three out of the corner. Irish up by ten. But wait, there's more. Still in the first. Chris Quinn the steal. And... He comes up with the lay in a 15-0 run at that point, but as you can see, it's gotten a bit closer. It's 38-34, Irish up by just four. West Virginia playing without leading scorer Drew Shafino. He is suspended for a violation of team rules, but still up 22-15 on Georgetown at the half. And we update you on Wake Forest. You see it's 32-23 in favor of the Demon Deacons. Final four seconds of the first half there. Wisconsin up by 10 in Madison. Second half coming up. Report is presented by Bank One's Personal Platinum, the credit card that.
Introducing the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. What if business no longer meant business travel? What if you could meet with people down the hall and across the country without leaving your desk? Be in different places, but still on the same page. Microsoft Office Live Meeting, a new service that lets you collaborate with groups of all sizes, all with just a phone, PC, and an internet connection. It's like being at the same table, even if you're worlds apart. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. As she is nosed down at the finish line here at part of the halftime fun. Really, the whole thing has been fun for the folks in Madison, except for the first five minutes. Michigan State looked like the best team in <laughs> basketball early, Dick Vitale, and how did Wisconsin turn this game around? Well, you know, the one thing they did, they stayed within their defensive system and their execution offensively. And then Devin Harris made a big shot, but don't forget about the youngster named Hanson. He came in, gave them nine points off the bench, gave them a spark. They started to get the edge in their execution offensively, and they do a great job defensively. They don't foul. Led the nation last year. I can't emphasize that enough, how essential that is to winning. Led the nation and fewest fouls attempted, fewest fouls that they committed. And today, they only committed four in the first half. That's important. A look at our game track. It has been a game of streaks. Michigan State made their first eight shots. Well-executed offense, took a 12-point lead, but then got in some foul trouble, and Wisconsin closed the half on a 36-14 run. Let's go to Doris Burke for how Michigan State will try to get back into this game. Doris? Dan, the only part of that first half that Tom Izzo was disappointed in was the turnovers. He said, you know, our turnovers were off soft passes that led to four straight layups for Wisconsin. He said, obviously, Paul Davis getting in foul trouble hurt us. I'm so thin there. He had to sit him for the rest of that half. But outside of the turnovers, he was very pleased. Well, Dick talked about the, the fouls, how Wisconsin just doesn't foul. They committed four in the first half. Michigan State committed 12 so wisconsin had 12 free throws michigan state only went to the line twice paul davis because of the foul trouble dick only played seven minutes you know dan how important it is that you have a team that doesn't allow the opponent to get to that free throw line nice drive they got some slashers this is certainly more than a one-man team with yep. Devin harris they got balance Man, can you imagine what they would look like if they had Tucker in their lineup as well? And remember this, they got a guy sitting out who's going to be special. Seven-foot Brian Butch, who will be playing next season, sitting a year out, getting stronger. He was a U.S. Today High yeah. School All-American. McDonald's All-American as well. Red shirting as a freshman and figuring he'll be better as a fifth-year senior than he would have been this year. Harris pulls up, and we have a whistle away from the ball and a foul against Michigan State as we check the first half stats and that foul story is one of the big stories fouls and turnovers and Michigan State 
beating themselves. Wisconsin not beating themselves at all in the first half. Davis picks up that foul, Dick. That's his third. That's the worst news Tom Izzo could get. Yeah, that's really a silly foul. And, you know, when you're down on a road like this, you got to sink or swim with your star. You cannot take them out of the lineup. Your flexibility in substituting certainly has become a nightmare on that baseline because they don't have a lot of size. Now, as tough as the schedule was, Kansas and Duke and Oklahoma and so forth, Michigan State comes in 5-6. and six. This is their first conference game. The schedule was tough, but they lost all of those big games. What does Michigan State realistically need to do in Big Ten play, in your opinion, to get into the NCAA tournament? Well, I think if you get in, when you look at the Big Ten right now, you look here, the free throw situation has been a nightmare. Only two attempts for Michigan State. Bottom line is, if you get in the top four slots of the mega conferences, you're getting in the NCAA tournament. And they have a great opportunity for that because the conference is wide, wide open. After Wisconsin, you know, we keep saying wide open. We're going to start giving respect that Wisconsin it looks like the heavyweight of the Big Ten. Two-time defending Big Ten regular season champs. On the drive, Owens has it blocked. Wilkinson follows up. Cannot convert, but he will go to the line. Following us here today, it is the 79th annual East-West Shrine Game here on ESPN. UNLV's John Robinson coaching the West, and Pittsburgh's Walt Harris will lead the East. It's the East-West Shrine Game following us here today on ESPN. The foul on Allen Anderson of Michigan State. Wilkinson, scoreless today, goes to the line. You know, Dan, in traveling across America, and even the coaches, you talk to Tom Izzo, is very honest. You talk, whether you talk to a G Katie and I haven't recently but I'm sure he'd be very honest as well and you talk to the coaches in the conference they will simply tell you how wide open it is and it's not vintage heavyweight Big Ten basketball like it's been in the past when you think about a Boston University beating a Michigan you think for example Purdue loses to Colorado State and SMU I mean you could go right down the league I mean even Wisconsin gets beat by Alabama who's certainly not one of the heavyweights this year in the SEC nice finish there by Davis when you think of the Big Ten two of the the first programs that always come to mind are Michigan State and Indiana. And Illinois, too. And Illinois, too. But Illinois, too. The reason I bring up Michigan State and Indiana is they're both having down years by their standards right now. Oh, there's no question. When you look at Indiana, nowhere near what they've been in the past. But they can get healthy quickly. They got the best recruiting class in America assembled for next year. The question is, will Josh Smith arrive at Bloomington or will he arrive to the NBA draft? And the more and more I'm hearing is a real report that it looks like the NBA is becoming more and more a part of his possible future. Foul committed by Chris Hill, his second. Michigan State in a zone trying to protect Paul Davis right now, who's got to stay on the floor despite those three fouls. Yeah, he's got to keep him out there. They need him on the floor. He gives him that post presence. He's an inside-outside player, one of the premier big players in the Big Ten. Harris, three rattles out. Rebound Davis. It was a 12-point lead for the Spartans five minutes into the game. It's been a 27-point turnaround since then. That's amazing when you just said 27-point turnaround. Psychologically, that's got to weigh on the minds of the kids at Michigan State. Their next two games are at home against Penn State and Michigan. Well, you talk about these two programs. One or the other wow. has won or shared a regular season title each of the last six years in this league. It's just amazing how when you think about Wisconsin, the little respect they get on a national basis. That's why it was so great to see that article in USA Today, front page story article in terms of the sports section by Jill Lieber. Strong drive and finish for Torbert Helmig took a shot from Torbert as well. Torbert from out of Flint, Michigan. Strong baseline driver. You think about Flint and how really important Flint has been to Michigan State. Think about that national championship team as you watch the strength of Torbert. Think about Mateen Cleaves. Talk about the likes of Morris Peterson. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've had they've had great players. Charlie Bell. Yeah, and great toughness, too, on those Michigan State teams. And Coach Izzo feels they don't have quite to the same level this year. That's a great word you utilize. That's really been emblematic of Tom Izzo's teams. Toughness. And that's what's happened now. You watch this team. Cincinnati is back being Bob Huggins' Bearcats because they're tough again, and they got that certain swagger again about their game. Harris kicks it off to Wilkinson. Helmig has gone to the bench, by the way, after taking that shot from Torbert. Zach Morley has returned for the Badgers. 
Well, he's a guy that gives up a lot of minutes off the bench and positive minutes. Very active player. He got down a little bit on himself, struggled against Alabama, and then all of a sudden had a little practice session where he got a little encouragement from Bo, and he went on and really looked super in their next game against College of Charleston, who was a good team that they blew out. Hey, don't forget to join ABC Sports for the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Tonight, you can watch Michelle Kwan as she tries to avenge her loss earlier this year to Sasha Cohen. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern with the dance final and the men's final. Michigan State ball after the foul on Wilkinson, his first. Hill nice picks pass. it to Shannon Brown. He's got great explosiveness. Misses the baseline runner and the ball is off. Morley back to the Spartans. Shannon Brown is a very explosive talent. Highly acclaimed diaper dandy. Came out of high school with a big time reputation. Watch him explode on that baseline. He's going to be a special player at Michigan State got things you cannot teach that explosiveness the great first step player of the year in the state of illinois last year hill off the screen and that's what chris hill does best his three makes this a closer game an 8-0 run now for the spartans that was really a nice design play special situations from out of the baseline to free hill for that shot one of the dilemmas for tom Izzo, hill sometimes is his best point guard but he's also his best shooter so he wants him off the ball to come off screens it's been a game of streaks a game of absolute spurts Take a look right now. He's going to utilize the screen off the inbounds. There comes him off the curl move. Nice little entry. Tickles the twine. Wisconsin lead is now down to nine. Wilkinson double team looking for Morley. Nice job, but he missed the layup. Nice execution, but they do not finalize. Morley had the wide open shot. Makes a good defensive play. Did he ever? He got bumped right there and no call. No call. Badger and company are not happy with that one. <laughs> 12 turnover committed by the Spartans, and now, as always, a patient Wisconsin team comes up the floor getting everybody involved. Patience, poise, usually each equals points. The three P's. Plenty of time on the shot clock nice for the Badgers. They really execute those back screens. Very difficult to defend that back screen unless you communicate. Now shot clock's a factor. Owens turns it over. Not a good possession for the Badgers. And not characteristic of the no. Badgers. Well, they have five turnovers against Indiana. And a 37-15 lead at halftime in that game. How Bracey right the two for 15. And let me tell you, he is a great talent. Yeah, you talk about a guy having to shoulder the load by himself. Bracey right at Indiana. Hill takes a bump, and we've got a foul on Wilkinson. They just keep coming back. I'll tell you one thing about Michigan State. They're coming back like we saw them against Oklahoma when they forced that game to overtime. Here's Zach Morley after the missed layup, but he makes up for a dick at the other end. Well, that's what you want to play. Not to hang his head. Here he is sprinting back. I want you to make the deflection. And there he is. Get hustled. There he gets bumped. No call. Remember, we had them against Kansas. They were down about 17 and came back, cut it to four, had a chance to get it to two and a walk-in violation on Davis. This team will not quit because their coach will not allow them to quit, Mr. Rizzo. Hanson back into the game, number 13 for Wisconsin. He gave them a spark off the bench with nine first-half points. Ray Nixon returns as well, and there's Maurice Ager checking into the game for Michigan State. All of a sudden, the little spurt by Michigan State has the crowd quiet now, has the crowd a little bit quiet. The Grateful Red have got a little silent. <laughs> Beautiful college campus. Yeah, it really is. is. A lake by our hotel, the Edgewater. Well, we go to the break on a 10-0 run for Michigan State. They're back within seven. With ESPN Full Court, you'll get the most out of the second half of the college basketball season. Order now. I'm going downtown. Can I give you a lift? Sure, thanks. Smooth. But not rich. Hi, can I give you a lift? Rich. Sure, thanks. But not smooth. Michelob Amber Bach. Rich and smooth. You got the wrong guy. Really? All right, just you and me. You ain't gonna like how this ends. Everywhere you go, everything turns to hell. You messing with my good nature. You're in my way. 
You're no longer the wingmaster. KFC Honey Barbecue Wings. Sauciest around. Seven for two ninety nine, twenty for seven ninety nine. To get the taste on your face, go KFC. John Lynch and his mom brought Chuck Flynn new Campbell's Chunky Grilled Chicken and Sausage Gumbo. It filled him upright. Tell me what else? What else should he be doing? Sure beats another frozen dinner. Chuck ate heartily. Later, his buddies ate their hearts up. Welcome back to Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin up 48-41, though Michigan State in the midst of a 10-0 run. And just a reminder for our viewers, you can catch more ESPN high-definition television on Monday night. Syracuse visits Missouri. And for a full schedule available on ESPN.com, search HD and ESPN HD, sponsored by Best Buy and Phillips. Seeing is believing. Call your cable operator or satellite provider. And Dan Schulman, after visiting the John Sanders or John Saunders Theater in Dick Vitale's house. I think you and I should camp there and check out the HD with him. Uh, I'll tell you, Doris, seeing is believing down at the John Saunders Theater. No doubt <laughs> about that. You're, you're a big proponent of HD, oh, aren't you? Oh, HD is really phenomenal. You're welcome anytime you want to come to John Saunders Theater at my home. Here's Morley. Big three to snap the 10-0 run for State. And that's really a great play right there for Morley. It's got to be a confidence booster. He misses the little layup, <laughs> right? He misses the layup, and yeah. he steps out and knocks down the trifecta. They had gone better than four minutes between field goals until that big three by Morley. That really hurts a club when you're battling back. A guy knocks down a three, then you come up empty, and look who's got the ball, Mr. Morley. Great Give it back. back. Give it back. Should have given it back to Morley. Should have given it back to Morley. Tried to make the spectacular play. Would have had the little layup. Just give it right back. I'll tell you, what a great play. Morley's setting a screen right now. I'll watch Morley after the screen. Freeze it right here. Now watch him. He'll pop right out here, get the ball after the screen. They have two guys here. Nobody steps out, and he gets the wide open three and converts it. He would have had a layup Morley had he communicated and let Harris know that he was trailing the play. Just would have flipped it back and would have been a little layup. Dick, from the offense you've seen from Wisconsin, this swing offense you've been talking about, is it easy to run and is it hard to defend? It's very tough to defend. I mean, your team has to communicate and you have to play defense as a unit. So many teams play great individual defense on the basketball, but they don't play it in a rhythm. If you go down and watch the great teams defend, they really defend as a unit when you talk Kentucky and Duke and teams that really exceptionally play while well. eventually North Carolina will under Roy Williams. And Tom Izzo, when he talks about what's wrong for his team this year, most of what he defense. talks about is defense. Well, they're allowing teams yeah. to shoot 49%. Anderson for three. Today's day and age, you're not going to win allowing teams to shoot 49%. Look out, Devin Harris crashes into the Michigan State bench. They're last in the Big Ten in opponent you know, field goal. And I don't want to make excuses or alibis. I know I was with Matt Larson today, who does a great job as the SID with basketball for Tom Izzo. And he was pointing out their schedule as well. And the bottom line is, I mean, that's not an excuse or alibi when you play Kentucky, Kansas, and people like that, North Duke, etc. Bottom line is, those are true teams, and that's why so many teams have folding records yep. about now because they played a lot of pretenders. Torbert is fouled. Morley gets the call. Crowd thought he had a clean block. And I mean, you go look at some clubs running out big numbers. You take a look at Georgetown runs out 9-0 to start the season. As you look here, the contact. And they get a win over Rutgers, a good win, but then get beat by Boston College. So now we don't know how good they really are. We don't know how good a Virginia is who jumps out three years in a row, 8-0, and zero, but then loses two out of three against quality competition. Providence beats him, and I'll tell you, Timmy Welsh has done a great yes, job has. with the Fires. I love McGrath, and we love the kid inside, Ryan Golds. Well, Tom Izzo says he would have the exact same schedule 
if he could do it over again, he would just space out those tough non-conference games a little bit more to give his team a chance to bounce back and prepare better. Get some wins. Remember, we say you can schedule who you want, baby, in November, December. But January and February, you can't schedule right. who you want. you got to play in your league, and you find out the difference between contenders and pretenders. High low from the big man Wilkinson to the point guard Harris. There's that interchangeable situation. Taking the point guard, rotating him down to the baseline, utilizing the screen. They execute that so well. That's coaching, man. That's coaching, getting everybody to function as a team. A dozen now for Harris, the high score in the game for Wisconsin. Wisconsin Badgers, you think about Wisconsin, you think about football and hockey, but let me tell you, basketball's alive and well here. Davis misses the jumper. Their hockey team is third, third in the nation. nation. Had a win last night in this building over Michigan Tech. Led the nation in attendance last year. And they play again tonight. Now on the drive, is that Davis or is it Hill? Let's see who the foul is on. It is on Chris Hill. Number four on Chris Hill. That's big because he's their perimeter shooter. He's their valuable guy on the perimeter with all kinds of winning experience. Four on Chris Hill. That's a big plus for Bo Ryan and his staff. But it's Davis who is coming out of the game. Andreas comes in. Now Shannon Brown is going to check in for Hill at the next whistle. Wide open look from the corner for Nixon. I tell you, he's been a big plus off the bench. Read an article about him today, how he's starting to get a lot of confidence coming in, giving him a lot of positive minutes, picking up for the slack of Mr. Tucker not being here. A 6'8 sophomore out of Milwaukee. Ten out of the 15 players on the Badger roster are from the state of Wisconsin. And in years past, Dick, the Reese Gaines and the Karan Butlers would leave with the state of Wisconsin, but now they're staying here, maybe for the Badgers, maybe for Marquette. While you look what Tom Green has done, take a look at this execution right here, drifting, freeze it, freeze it. I mean, I can make that shot. Get me the ball. I want that shot. He's wide open. Look, nobody near him. Wide open. Get me the ball there. I knocked that sucker down with one eye. Balls and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> what does ugly have to do with shooting? Oh, you're supposed to say you're not ugly. You're not see, ugly. You're my Mike Patrick would say, I can't wait you're to see Mike. Ugly. I can't wait to see Mike Wednesday. Hey, he would I, say, you're not I ugly. Had a, uh oh, here comes Nixon. And we've got a turnover. I got a friend out in Denver said he was out there on Monday and there were thousands of Dick Vitale faces bobbling around the city out there. What were you doing out in Denver? Well, I was at the University of Denver for Centennial, their 100th year in basketball, and they beat Wyoming. So Irv Brown out there was doing the color commentary at ESPN Regional and had a great time. I'll tell you, the Chancellor Richie, you talk about a guy with a passion. He doesn't take a dime from the university, has given him over $50 million, and what a great job they did beating Wyoming. Terry Carroll did a great job as a coach. They a lot also of great basketball being played around the country. They also beat Colorado State. Torbert inside, stretch. I think Morley is the guy who knocked it free. Wisconsin basketball. Things bouncing away to the Badgers. Where's my guy Barry Alvarez? He's in Florida. Where's Barry? He's the, now going to be the AD replacing Pat Richter. Look at this right here. Close deflection. Ball goes out of bounds. It looked to me like a Wisconsin player kicked it out of bounds. Well, you can see Harris sliding away from the end line, trying to get out of the path of the ball. Harry Elvarez has done a great job with the football program. Pat Richter has done an outstanding job selecting the right guys to head his program. Morley is called for the foul. That'll be his second. Bo Ryan from out of Chester, PA, where they produced, as you said, Jameer and Nelson. Teddy Cottrell was his teammate, who's now up to be the defensive coordinator of Minnesota. Was on a staff with the Jets, played with him in high school, and football and basketball. A 13-point lead for Wisconsin. If you joined us late, Michigan State led by 12. Five minutes into the game, Ager knocks down a jumper. Maurice Ager, I really like his ability. I like the ability of Shannon Brown. The problem is when you look at this crowd, we've dissected and analyzed it on many of our games. It's without a point guard. Brandon Cotton transferring, not happy with playing time. Is he kidding me? It, is he not, kidding yeah, me? Not he not was a, injured. He had illnesses in his family, deaths in his family. Has not been in practice a whole lot. It's time for him to grow up and understand that maturity is part of being a student. Bottom line is, how are you going to get played? Playing time unless you earn playing time. And Tom Izzo still not sure will he transfer, will he stay in school? Is the door still open for a return to the program? They've got a kid coming in next year. Drew, Drew Neitzel, Neitzel, who apparently is completely ambidextrous, can shoot 18-foot jumpers with either hand, who they think is going to step in and become the point guard. And they need a point guard on this team. They need a point guard badly. But if I were Brandon Conner, I'd look in the mirror, listen to his mother, get back to Tom Izzo, say, I'm sorry, I want to really be back with that squad, apologize to his teammates for not 
really being at practice on a regular basis. And the bottom line is work and work and get back in the lineup. Because if he transfers, he's going to sit another year yep. out. Morley at the line for the Badgers. Hits the front end. What an addition Morley has been, especially with Butch redshirting and Tucker injured. Remember, Kirk Penny graduated. What a great player he was in this Wisconsin program. Morley has stepped in and gotten some big minutes. He really has. And I'll tell you one thing. With their future, what they have coming in, they signed a seven-footer as well. A uh, kid named Steitzma, who everybody says is an outstanding talent. And they got Brian Butch there as yep. well next year when you talk about Wisconsin. So things are really up in Badger basketball. And if everybody stays, they're not losing much off this currency. And this is a one of the glory heirs for Wisconsin to basketball. There have not been many. They've done as well in the last five years, going back to the Final Four appearance under Dick Bennett, as they've ever done in the history of the program. Well, Dick Bennett really squeezed and squeezed and got the most out of his talent while he was on that sideline. Lizak is back on the floor now for State. Well, they got two losses. Wisconsin lost to Alabama on the road. Just a poor game. And then lost an overtime game in the ACC Big Ten Challenge to the Turks of Maryland, who we've also seen. Yep. You and I beat Florida at Florida. Gary Williams Club, very dangerous. I can't wait. I'm going to get in Turk country next Wednesday. I'm going to be down to meet Mike Patrick. I'm going to be working. I tell you, what a great job he has done in the NFL. Yep. Well, parity reigning supreme. As you talk about different leagues and different teams, and anybody can beat anybody, it seems, more than in any other year an uncharacteristically high foul total on a Wisconsin and a half of basketball. They foul as infrequently as any team in America, but they've already put Michigan State into the bonus here in the second half. And this game's certainly not away yet. Michigan State could go on a little spurt and really get back to this game in terms of getting down at the single digits. Down 11 right now. Davis knocks him down. Timeout on the floor. An SEC update. Out of the break, and then a look at Bo Ryan's swing offense when we come back to the Cole Center in Madison after this. the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. That was a man who faces any danger. Throwing devices back on friend and stranger. He's the cool Batman. He's the cool Batman. He's changing all those numbers. Lower prices are his game. Always. Stop. It's okay. It's going to be fine. No? AOL 9.0 optimized with top speed technology makes web pages load up to five times faster than before. <laughs> Mommy's home. Such a good boy. Life needs quick thinking. Can I cut in? Sure. You look just like my third husband. You look like a 1010-987 user. I tried 1010-987. It was just like you said. 3 cents a minute and 39 cents to connect to anywhere in the U.S. And to Canada. And Western Europe. No commitment, no monthly fees. No sweat. I can't believe it's 3 cents a minute. Now, we're going to keep dancing until you believe me. Uh, hey, can I get in? Sure. Thanks. Revson in our Sports Center in-game studios. Number 11, Florida, looking good early against Tennessee. Already up 10. Matt Wall for three, and he nails it. And then keep an eye on Wall. Gators up by 13. Wall steals the inbounds, gets it to Bonell Polis, who lays it in. It's a 31-13 game, man. Wow, so the Gators up huge early on Tennessee. Wisconsin, a 12-point deficit five minutes into the game. Up 10 at the half, up 10 right now. And they have been awesome for most of this game, most of this year, and most of Bo Ryan's two-and-a-half-year tenure here in Madison. Well, the Roddy Riptiles must be going nuts. You know, Tennessee's only got one loss, and the loss was to Nebraska. And Nebraska's done a phenomenal job. Barry Callis, how are you with that club? They blew out Tennessee. 
Now let's watch Wisconsin, how patient they are, how everybody gets involved, moves without the ball. Good spacing, too. Always 15 to 17 feet apart. Then comes the high screen. You step out after the screen. There's that little slice shuffle cut. It's like a flex move cut. And the guard goes down to the post, and Boo Wade might be the best post-up player that Wisconsin has. Well, you've got to beat him to the spot. You've got to beat him to the spot. You mentioned Wade. What a job he's doing with Miami. I want a little injury right now, but the rookie's been yeah. sensational. Former Marquette superstar. 11 for Boo Wade. You know, Wisconsin had five players average double figures last year. They've got three and double figures so far here today. You talked about the unselfishness as Anderson knocks down another three, his second of the game, just his third of the season. Yeah, it's only his third three that he's made all year long, the veteran player. Well, they need that junior class of Hill, Anderson, and Torbert to really step up and be leaders on this team. Here's his patience on the offensive end. I like the activity of Morley. Morley sets good screens. Look at this, not the passing game, but they set screens a la Indiana. But Indiana was really super with Bobby Knight with that passing game. Now Harris draws the foul. We're here with the sold-out Cole Center in Madison to Wisconsin. Number 18 of Wisconsin against 5 and 6 Michigan State in the league opener for the Spartans. Wisconsin is 1-0, having defeated Indiana by 34 on Tuesday. Points in the paint favor Wisconsin in this game, but a lot of them, maybe most of them, Dick, have been scored by the guards. Yeah, because they invert them so well you know last night when i did my book signing i was greeted by dennis felton's mom coach at georgia he said be patient she said georgia eventually will turn it around and you know what hey, she's right what a win they had over georgia tech exactly and he stepped into a tough time georgia tech's got to bounce back from that loss talk to poor Ewan, who has done one of the great jobs in america as they got the date with north carolina on sunday Heating up conference play, really the second week of it right now. I can't wait the next Saturday. Wake Forest and Duke at Duke. I'll be down here with Mr. Musburger. I mean, I got you on a Tuesday, Kentucky Mike and, and Mississippi State. Then I got Mike Patrick and Brett Musburger. I mean, I got three superstars. <laughs> it takes three of us just to handle one of you. <laughs> keep to keep up with one of you. you guys give me any air time? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting by. 10-point lead. Badgers, Michigan State hanging around in the second half. But Gracchus turns it over, three on one. Give it to the right. Give, oh, I should have given it to Got away with it to the left, but he should have given it to the right for the layoff. Harris stays in touch, follows the miss, and the lead is a dozen. Guys don't communicate enough in transition. they got to let them know where they are. That ball should have went to the right for a layup. Fortunately, they got the offensive rebound, but I love Devin Harris. Talk about the better players in America. You better include the name, Mr. Harris. Doing a little bit of everything for Wisconsin today. 15 points. Badgers by a dozen. Multifunctional. Adaptable. Retractable. It's a sport utility with more utility. The new GMC Homeport XUV. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. GMC Professional Grade Engineering. There's one subject you never bring up, the dish. When it rained, we lost the pitcher. When it was windy, we lost the pitcher. When the dog sneezed, we, we lost, lost the, the pitcher. pitcher. I had to adjust the dish twice a week. So we got Comcast Digital Cable. Pitcher's perfect, we love it. See, the trick with the dish is knowing how to adjust it. I like bugs, dead bugs. Everything we do is about connecting you to the stuff you love most. Comcast. Well, 
Wisconsin to buy a dozen after trailing by a dozen at five minutes into the game. I think you've talked a lot about the swing offense for Bo Ryan. Tell us what it means. Well, you know, you talk about the swing offense. It starts with interchangeable parts. You can take your forwards and your guards, and you can certainly invert them. It starts with good spacing, 15 to 17 feet apart, so the defense can't allow help. And then it starts with great perimeter ball movement, swinging the ball side to side, and then they utilize the back screen so well, and then good, strong basket cuts to the basket. Those are essential parts, and it's really easier said than done. I mean, everybody can look at a book and look at that, but getting on the floor and teaching it takes special ability, and Bo Ryan has that ability. And that's, that's why he won four national Division three titles. Well, that's what I wanted to say. Most coaches in, in big-time college basketball probably were an assistant at a big-time program for a number of years, but he took a different route coming up through the Division three ranks. Well, he didn't have the chance to be part of the college landscape with all the guys of the popular situation today is to be an assistant for a superstar coach and get an opportunity he didn't have that his way he's had to work his way up from the trenches in coaching from the high school right on to the division three level and really understands winning and has had years and years to really fine-tune this offensive system played under a great high school coach ron rainey who's in the house here today lives in myrtle beach but coached him at chester high school who also coached him in college at wilkes college well, now let's take a look. We told you what the swing offense is. Now let's take a look at it in pictures. Well, we're going to take a look how they take the guards and they rotate them down inside. There's a take a look right there. Did a great job. Now look at the back screen. See the back screen? Devin Harris uses the back screen. That posts up inside. Showed his multi-dimensional talent. I think because of this system, and because of when you get into the NCAA tournament, where basketball becomes a little bit more conservative and execution out of the half court becomes bigger, and because defense is more important on each possession, they have a legitimate chance to make a run for the Final Four, but they would need Orlando Tucker in that lineup as well. There's no doubt in my mind there are about 15 teams that can win four games in a row and go to the Final Four, and they are one of the 15. They were there four years ago. They made the Sweet 16 last year, lost a very close game Kentucky. to Kentucky. Had they beaten Kentucky, they would have played Marquette. Can you imagine what that would have been like here in the state of Wisconsin with a trip to the Final Four on the line? Tom Crean, don't forget the job he's done out in Milwaukee. Rebound Morley. And that conference with Cincinnati, Louisville. I mean, Rick Pitino's kids. I say you talk about a program on the rise. Certainly the stock is way up for a program like Louisville. But he's not wasting time. He's beating number ones right now in Kentucky and Florida. Again, great patience. All the things Dick talked about. The spacing, the unselfishness, the back cuts. Yeah, the poise they have offensively. Oh, wow. Uh, by Morley. I'll tell you, Morley, Gary Williams tell me he was really concerned with him when he was preparing to get ready to play Wisconsin, and you could see why. He really makes things happen. Comes off that bench, and he's a productive player. He and Hanson have been big pluses off the bench. Earlier this half, Michigan State went on a 10-0 run and got it down to 7. It's back up to 15. And the great Beretta getting a little bit more alive now. I used to love the name the Bleacher Creatures. <laughs> Davis calling for the ball inside, not getting it. Torbert finds nice Rasheed pass. Johnson. Wisconsin basketball. Got to make that layup when you execute like that. You can't come up empty and miss that layup, especially when you got a 15-point deficit, Doris. Dan, you were talking about the Hoops renaissance. Obviously, UW-Milwaukee getting the NCAA for the first time last year. Marquette's run of the Final Four. You also mentioned the fact that Wisconsin doing this with a lot of in-state talent. Bo Ryan has four guys from Milwaukee, all of whom have contributed today. Ray Nixon, Boo Wade, of course, Mr. Harris and Mr. Owens. All four guys from the Milwaukee area. Freddie Owens and, and Harris were neighborhood friends. They dreamed of watching the NCAA tournament. They thought there would never be a chance it would be them on TV running through the NCAA. They've obviously done a great job. Who Wade and Ray Nixon, also Milwaukee natives, they met on the summer hoop circuit, and they talked about Wisconsin. They both thought about going out of state to play, but after Ray Nixon signed, he said, Boo, you've got to stay home. We want to make this program the best it can be. And obviously, guys, the in-state talent seems to be enough to make this program what it is. I tell you, Doris, I met Wesley Matthews Jr. last night about 
6'4 and a star here in the city. And I have a crazy feeling just talking to him. I mean, I didn't say he's definitely coming here, but I got a crazy feeling he's going to stay home and wear that badge of red. Things are good and getting better for the Wisconsin basketball program. They have tied their biggest lead of the afternoon as they try to keep these win streaks going. SUV. Multifunctional. Adaptable. Washable. Retractable. It's a sport utility with more utility. The GMC Envoy XUV. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. GMC Professional Grade Engineering. You're purple. Yeah. So am I. Uh, and I'm Air Miles. So am I. Bank One presents Personal Platinum. And I chose the low interest rate. Me too. And I'm middle of the month payment. No, I'm beginning of the month. You're purple. Yeah. Bank One's Personal Platinum. Choose the one for you. I like Pilates. Oh, I love drinking those. Individual answers. Bank One. Welcome back to Madison. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale with you, along with Doris Burke. A 17-point lead for Wisconsin. And this is not a fluke. I mean, they've been blowing people out recently. Hey, just think about their last three games. College of Charleston and Tommy Harrington, an outstanding team. And they beat them 75-49. They blew away Indiana. You could say Indiana's down. It's still Indiana. It's still Bracey Wright. 79-45. They're down 12 to start this game, 17-5. And they're up right now 15. That's a 27-point turnaround. It's no out. And if these kids are legitimate and they can flat out play and they're well coached this is a solid basketball program that is on a rise big time and they got a great opportunity if they can maintain their home court dominance to win three consecutive big 10 titles my friends and he's one of the key reasons Devin Harris Wisconsin has never won three consecutive big 10 regular season titles they could do that this year last year they were the undisputed regular season champs for the first time since 1947, they have not lost a Big Ten home game under Bo Ryan, 17-0 in the last two seasons, plus the Indiana game. Call up Barry Alvarez. Don't get the guy a raise, man. You gotta keep him. I would tease him. I said the salary a little different here than it was at Platteville. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're talking about ESPN HD earlier. This game available in HD. Also upcoming Monday night, Syracuse at Missouri is available in ESPN HD. And then Wednesday, the unbeaten Bearcats that you were talking about taking on one of the other great programs in the state of Wisconsin, number 22, Marquette. I think Cincinnati's been really impressive. They haven't just been peak, peak beating people. They've been annihilating people, beating by 25, 28, 30. Jason Maxiel, to me, is the most improved player. I've laid eyes on all season long. An interior player for Cincinnati. Hey, a Tuesday, that place in Starkville. I can't wait to get yeah. there. I'm doing a book sign. You gonna come to that I'm one? Coming to that June one. June 30, you get to the bookstore at <laughs> Mississippi State. I, I have a feeling I'll be you. your chauffeur to that one. <laughs> timeout taken here by Wisconsin. A 30-second timeout with 7.03 to go. 15 point lead for Wisconsin as we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball it's time to flash back into the ESPN archives 15 seconds to go
prototypical college basketball leader Mateen Cleaves was. If you wonder where all these flashbacks are coming from, three <laughs> live birds at ESPN, over a million tapes, and this is Phil Coolis, and he's the guy who's moving the tapes around, finding what everybody needs. Hey, Phil, remember this, Phil, as you work the library. George Bodenheimer used to work in the mail library at one time. He used to be my driver, and today's the most influential guy by Sporting News, number one, George Bodenheimer. He used to say to me all the time, Dickie V, where am I going? Here I am, I come out of a great college, and something about him I knew was a winner. I said, George, someday you're going to make it. Today, President ESPN and President ABC Sports. I'll tell you, if there's over a million tapes in that library, and Phil Coolis is the only guy who knows where they are, I think Phil Coolis is the most influential man in sports. Oh, wait a minute now, you better not say that. You know where your check comes from. You know where your check comes from. Hey, Mr. Bodenheimer, he said that, not me. Wisconsin up by 15, using the clock. They always do this, but using it maybe a little bit more right now with time on their side as well. Wide open, open. wide open execution, patience, and then they absolutely break you down. A lot of teams do a great job defending the first pass, but not the second or third. Look at this team. We mentioned early in the first half of the last 15 games they've played between these two teams, nobody ever has reached 70 points. Wisconsin is on the verge of that with six minutes to go. Very difficult to come back against them, and I'm going to tell you why it's tough to come back against Wisconsin. Alan the, way they the, foul is the way they control the basketball and their patience, and they don't turn it over. It's been a frustrating year. You can see the smile. Tom Izzo was very honest with us before the game, very disappointed, especially on a defensive end. I mean, when you look across America now, Michigan State and Missouri have to be the two biggest disappointments yep. based on preseason rankings. Missouri again hosting Syracuse Monday night on ESPN. Tom Izzo told us how big a win would be here today, assuming they lose, drop to 5-7, and 0-1 oh in the league. How devastating, or is it even devastating this early in the year for them to lose this game today? Well, you know, losing to Wisconsin on the road certainly is one that doesn't hurt you as much. It would have been a great psychological, certainly, win, but the next two games are a must. They're playing Penn State, and they're playing a real revitalized Wolverine team, and both are at home. Those games become a must. There's a look at Bo Ryan. Can't say enough as you look at the numbers there, plus 6.3. Here's a guy you never hear his name mentioned as one of the premier coaches, and let me tell you, this guy can coach with any of the big-time guys. He really understands the game. Freddie Owens at the line as Wisconsin reaches 70. He's got to wait so many years to get an opportunity, and he's taken the most advantage of the opportunity that Pat Richter has given him here at Wisconsin. Can't do much better than what the guy's done. Come in and win two Big Ten titles, twice coach of the year in a Big Ten. Win a game in the NCAA tournament two years ago, go to the Sweet 16 in the tournament last year, and higher hopes for this season, especially if Alondo Tucker gets healthy as Shannon Brown knocks down a three. I don't know, something about Shannon Brown I really like. Every time I watch him play, there's something about him. that kid tells me that he is going to be a future star. You know, sometimes, and he's only a freshman, Dick, but he looks like he's playing with more confidence than anybody else wearing green. Well, they started off executing so well. If you could take, you could run a clinic on what they did in the first five minutes. Michigan State executed exceptionally well. Badgers got away with one there. Should have turned it over. Helmick driving. Got away there. Five finally called it. Mr. Crawford made the call. Good call. Don't, he walked. Don't forget, after us, at the top of the hour, it's the 79th annual East-West Shrine Game. So you see some of the best talent as they look to impress NFL scouts. Players who are scheduled to play include Casey Clawson and Ryan Dinwiddie. The East-West Shrine Game follows us on ESPN. Push going to go against Wisconsin. Is it Wade? No. Well, the rebound is another story here today. Year after year, Michigan State has led the league and at times the nation in rebounding, but not as big, not as tough this year, and not rebounding as well. Well, you know, they lost the lights not only of Lorbeck, but they would have a guy like Zach Randolph in their lineup right now who's playing brilliantly for Portland. Yeah. They go back a Guys who used up their eligibility, you look at Anna Gagne and Ballinger and Wolf and Hudson and all the big, strong guys they've had over the years. You know, you take a look at the Big Ten, it's certainly maybe not vintage Big Ten, but there are no really easy stops. Everybody's going to have to come to play, whether you go to Iowa, whether you go to Purdue. And the bottom line is you better protect your home turf. 
the one thing about the big camp, things run in cycles. You may not be up on top today, but tomorrow it could change. I'm telling you a program on a rise is Michigan. Michigan is closing the gap big time when you talk about getting back to prominence. Tommy Amick is doing a job recruiting, and their players right now are starting to get that winning feeling, and they were a program on a rise. Yes, so Tom Izzo facing challenges with his team on the floor and in-state recruiting challenges from Tommy Amaker. Well, right for the last five years, he got the player of the year in the state. Last year, they got Devin Harris, uh, not Devin Harris, uh, Deion Harris yep. over at Michigan, and they'd like to have Devin Harris <laughs> <laughs> to join Deion Harris. Foul committed by Torbert. We talked about the rebounding and how it's just been assumed over the years Michigan State would dominate the opposition. They're barely out-rebounding their opponents this year by less than one rebound per game. They're getting out-rebounded here today. Look at how good they were two and three years ago. Hey, look at those numbers. Unbelievable. But there's something else you got to factor in there. And I don't like to always go back to that as an excuse or alibi, but that's against the likes of Schedule, Kentucky, sure. Kansas, Oklahoma, Duke, Syracuse, UCLA. We'll find out a lot more in a few weeks as the, the stats will become more meaningful as everybody gets more and more conference games under their belt. Talk about a program on a rise. It's tough to say UCLA on a rise, but UCLA, I really believe, starting from now, when you watch them next year and a year after, the recruits Ben Holland's going to get, they're going to be on a move. Kept alive by Davis. A couple of the Spartans collide and hit the floor, and Wisconsin comes up with the ball. Nothing spectacular in terms of when you watch Wisconsin play. They do it in very rhythmic style, and they do it very simple. Keep it simple. Kish, ever hear that? Yeah, Keep it simple, all stupid. The time. And then you look at Bo Ryan, he's got a doctor, man, a Ph.D., poor, hungry, and driven. <laughs> you were bugging him, but he's not so poor anymore now that he's got some years here under his belt, but he's still hungry and driven. I saw that once in Alex Rodriguez's locker. He had it above his locker. He had Ph.D., poor, hungry, and driven. I don't think he's poor no, anymore. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I we should follow like ESPN HD, hungry and driven. That's what they've got. You know what I really discovered here for the new year in 2004? What? You have caught me. You're in further back than I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Come on now, who's got more hair? Let's take up a contest. We have a contest on ESPN. Who has more hair? My town or Dan? <laughs> my God. I thought he's getting more than an I am. No, neither one of us is a Zach Morley. I know that. Here, here, uh, here, here, there. From behind, uh, it doesn't work any better, does it? Uh, no, you win the battle there. You got a little more than I do. Well, yeah, but when I... You got a few years on me. You're I doing do? A, a couple. I'm 64 and I act 12. <laughs> well, we could be doing worse, right? We could be that guy. I'm glad they didn't get the shot. I was wearing that earlier. Yeah, I, I was wearing that, that with the crowd. Yeah. That's not like you. <laughs> <laughs> Wilkinson at the line for the Badgers. Just a solid performance again by Wisconsin. They spot up to a 12-point lead. Nice drive. Too many to get out on a break for Kelvin Corbett. You lose for this kick because he's got a great attitude, and you just want to see him do well. Tom Izzo thought that ball was dribbled out of bounds, and it should be back over to Michigan State, but Eddie Hightower didn't agree. Use that patience, manage the clock, take some time off the clock, but still stay within their offensive set. Morley not forcing anything. Wade, boy, a lot of space down that middle. They don't take bad shots. That's yep. not a bad shot. That was a wide open three. Under three minutes to go. Ager on the run for State. Andreas. Torbert's shot has improved this year, but still not a great outside shooter. Trying to assert himself a little more offensively. Double screen up high, release from the double screen, go to the post. Ager slips inside, 15-footer, not there, tip no good. And who comes out of there but Devin Harris. I tell you, when you got a guard that can rebound, handle the ball, what doesn't he do? He earns his scholarship big time here in Badger country. You know what he says? College for him is like a never-never land. He doesn't ever want to grow up, but he's got one more year of eligibility. And they hope he never grows up and thinks about those three letters, NBA, and says bye-bye because there are a lot of scouts in the house here looking at him. Stay in school, big possession, solid performance. I'm telling you, I am really impressed more than ever, even watching on a Jew with this Wisconsin basketball programming team. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade.
travel to win today. The Badgers would go to 2-0 in league play. After the win over Indiana on Tuesday, Michigan and Illinois at home. But first, they've got to go to Purdue, to West Lafayette, to take on the Boilermakers. And you talked about this league. Even though it might be down as a whole, there are no easy spots. Every game's winnable, every game's losable. And that's what I said a little bit earlier, and I really believe that, Dan. I tell you that, on Purdue, certainly it's not going to be an easy one. No question at all down there, Gene Cady. Gene Cady does a great job on his program. Had those two tough losses to Colorado State and SMU, but has that win over Duke? Good position inside by Davis. They need more of that. Nice post-up play right there by Davis. Big, strong, utilized his whole body down here in the three-second area. First points of the second half for Paul Davis, who has spent much of the day in foul trouble. 15 feet apart. See, very difficult to give a lot of help. You can't give help. Look at the way they spread the court. Spread the court so well. Now they back it out. Now they're going into their little delay. Take some time off the clock. They're in command. Discipline. Execution. Bo Ryan's not going to... Not going to dazzle you at the microphone with a lot of wind liners, but he can coach in that gym, my friends. Barry Alvarez, you got yourself a good one here. Mr. Richter, you get A-plus for hiring him. Chris Hill has just fouled out of the game. 13 points on the afternoon. But the one thing I will tell Mr. Ryan after this game, he's got to change one thing. He cannot. He cannot root against the Packers in this state and be the coach of Wisconsin. He cannot. I don't care if he's from Philadelphia. He's better root for his Packers tomorrow. I mean, he better root for them against Philadelphia. He's been here 27 years. It's time to make the switch over to Green Bay, don't you think? Yeah, but your roots, man, you grew yeah. up there. He was telling me stories about growing up. You know who his counselor was when he was in a high school camp no. up in the, up there in the Poconos? Jimmy Valvano. Oh, really? Yeah, he told me Jimmy V was, he told me about playing against Bob Lloyd up at Darby in high school. Bob Lloyd, who's the head of the Jimmy V Foundation, does a great job for his buddy Jimmy. We played with that Rutgers. Talked about Harry Litwack, former coach at Temple. Talked about all the great coaches he learned from. Guys like Jack Kraft and Villanova. Wow. Dr. Jack Ramsey. There it is, Dick. Oh! He said. That must be wacky. Look at this wacko. Look at that wacko. That must be Billy Paco. <laughs> hey, man, let's send those pictures, and JT says, what up? Is that it? Unless you want to hear about this revolutionary new diet pill that's guaranteed to. I don't want to hear about that at all. I don't think so. Oh. Life's better with the butterfly. Come see how at msn.com. One sure way to promote the refreshing taste of 7-Up, give out free samples. Hey, everyone, it's all free. Help me stop smoking. You're quitting. You're my hero. I'm not a superhero. Nicoderm CQ. Just one patch helps you fight cravings all day. You step down gradually until you're free. You're not a superhero. You don't have to be. Everyone has fallen in love with the cooler. I love this schmuck. He's a loser. Winner, two Golden Globe nominations. Best Supporting Actress, Maria Bello. Best Supporting Actor, Alec Baldwin. And winner, National Board of Review for Best Supporting Actor. Alec Baldwin is electrifying. And Rolling Stone raves. The cooler hits the jackpot. Maria Bello dazzles. Alec Baldwin's performance is the stuff Oscars are made of. What is happening to you? The cooler, rated R. Now playing in select theaters. What? You're no longer the wingmaster. KFC Honey Barbecue Wings. Sausage to round. 7 for 2 dollars 20 for $7.99. To get the taste on your face, go KFC. Winter X Games Eve, live from Aspen, starts Saturday, January 24th on ABC and continues nightly at 9 on ESPN. Jay Singh's scintillating second round of seven straight birdies on the back nine. Wow. Catapulted him into the lead at the Mercedes Championship. DJ Singh rolls it right in. But the world's best are still within striking distance. Live third round coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Dave Rebson in the Sports Center in Game Studios, Louisville and South Florida. Cars looking for their 11th straight win. Larry O'Bannon behind the arc. He drains it. Look at that score. 40 to 15 in favor of the Cardinals at the half. And Wake Forest looking to remain unbeaten up 58 to 51 on Clemson as they play with seven minutes to go, Dan. 
Uh, they're pretty close there for Wake and Clemson. That Louisville score is unbelievable. I don't know if anybody expected that team to be this good this year, but they are playing some outstanding basketball right now. I tell you, Louisville, Cincinnati, give me some matchup. Louisville, Marquette, another great matchup. Conference USA has got some great matchups coming up this year. Coming up next here on ESPN, the East-West Shrine Game. At the top of the hour, or as soon as this one is over, and it'll be over in just over a minute, as Wisconsin will go to 11 and 2, 2 and 0 in the league. Michigan State will drop to 5 and 7, 0 and 1 in Big Ten play. I think put the burden on him. You asked a good question about how devastating this loss would be. Michigan State's got to win their next two games, both at home against Penn State and Michigan, to get to 7 and 7. They got to get on a plus side. He's a big timer. He's a PT peer. He's the three S man. Super scintillating, sensational. Devin Harris did come in highly rated. Was not one of the McDonald's High School All Americans. Has made himself an All American. Devin Harris with now with 21 of the game. That's the high in this game as Ager knocks down to three. And now the crowd is booing. Tom Izzo for calling a timeout when the issue's already been decided. Well, I'm happy that he called a timeout because I want to lay on you my five guys, the best of 25 years in the Big Ten. Can I give you my five? Let's hear it. All right, I'm going to go point guard. you got to do it by position. I'm going with Mateen Cleaves. I'm going with Cleaves and Steve Alford. And then I'm going up front with Joe Barry Carroll, Calvert Chaney, and Jim Jackson. Well, coming up the week of January the 19th, we'll be announcing on ESPN Games the Silver Anniversary Team for eight big conferences. I know you were a part of the ACC committee to decide who should be the top five, and it's by position. You can't just pick five guys. So starting the week of January the 19th, tune in. Boy, there are going to be some arguments around college campuses around oh, about yeah. this one. Huh? Like, for example, you think about the ACC. You don't include, obviously, David Thompson. Bo knows wow. basketball. <laughs> Bo knows, man. Wow. Bo knows. <laughs> You can't include David Thompson because he's prior to the 25 right. years. And certainly there are a lot of guys eliminating. But the bottom line is, you think about small forward in the ACC. Who do you like, Grant Hill or Lenny Bias? How do you pick one of those? Are they all great, great players? Well, don't tell us who, but you had to pick one of them, right? Oh, I did. Yeah. I did. I just gave you my five in the Big Ten. Final few seconds here in Madison to Wisconsin. An impressive win after falling behind by a dozen five minutes into the game. What I want to know now is Andy Katz going out celebrating. And what about what about our guy Rudy Marsky? Is he going to celebrate with his wife now? Buy a nice dinner, celebrate his badges. Hey, Marsky, they told me you haven't donated a dime in the last 10 years. Don't let some of that cash from USA to your great alma mater. The streets continue for Bo Ryan and Wisconsin. A convincing win over Michigan State. 77 to 64. Coming up next, it's the 2004 East West Shrine Game. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN. It's happened from time to time.